right guys, this is a brand new Hover Things Flip FPV, still in the bag, just got it from GetFPV.com. These have been around for a while, a lot of builds, but this is version 1, and you've heard the old saying, better is the enemy of good enough. Well, here we go. I'm going to call this the Flip FPV version 2. I got a bag of improvements that I've designed and printed out on my 3D printer and some other stuff I think is going to be pretty interesting. I printed everything in yellow so when we get to it it should be readily apparent. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the other stuff that's going to go into this build. I'm going to be using the new Rotor Geeks 30 amp. These have BL Heli 13 which have guys you might want to write this down, one shot. If you haven't had a chance to look up one shot or one shot 125 it's something you might want to take a look at. It just makes your throttle responses that much faster. And if you get in trouble, you need throttle now. Might, this might help you get it out of trouble. I'm going to be also running the, uh, the Easy UHF receiver. This is a four channel, just happen to have it lying around. I'll also be running the uh, uh, Immersion RC 2.4 with the uh, Video Aerial Systems Ultra antenna. I bought some new, also from Rotor Geeks. Here's the original box. These are the new uh, Cobra CM2217s, 950 kV, all black, very nice looking. I'll be running 10 inch props on these because I'm after speed, and that's what this whole version 2 thing is all about. I'll be running a FEO, this is a new FEOV, and I have replaced that 3.6 with a 2.8 millimeter lens because I'll be flying low to the ground and close to stuff. That's how I crashed my old one. <laughs> For a brain, I'm going to be using from Multi Rotor Mania. They produced this Dragonfly 32 Pro. It is a Naze 32. I've had several of these. I'm very happy with the quality of these. Haven't had any failures yet, cross fingers. Uh, hooked up to that, again, I got this from Multi Rotor Mania. I bought the U Blocks, the Neo M8N. I know that the return to home and all of that doesn't work with the Nase 32 because clean flight's not quite there yet. I really want to use this uh, GPS to feed into the OSD because it's all about speed. I think the GPS will feed into here and we'll get a pretty good indication of our actual uh, airspeed. Anyway, this is a micro OSD. It is everything that the minim OSD is except in a tiny fraction of the package. Also, that came from uh, Multi Rotor Mania. And connecting everything up will be this wonderful Lumineer power distribution board. And it has a little place for Palulu. We're going to use that for part of the version 2 improvements. So, anyway, go ahead and get your instructions, tear your bag open, get your instructions out, and let's start putting this thing together. Right, a really effective way that the racing community has found to go faster is to take an angle and put it beneath your motor to kind of tilt your motors forward and that way uh, it's more aerodynamic when the thing is flying. But the problem with that is, if we use that technique, uh, is that it limits us to about 10 degrees. Because if we try to go more than 10 degrees, the angles just don't work out for us. So the maximum you can get on a motor wafer is probably about, about 10 or 12 degrees. Well, I decided if 10 degrees is good, I think 20 degrees is probably twice as good. And that's what I've done, but I'm not going to put it under the motors. Instead, as you see, we're going to put it on the screws there. We're going to, the only mod you got to make is to your arm. You have to elongate the holes to allow the bolts to fit through there at a slight angle. And then put the wedge on top. And so that way all of the motor, all of the arms along with the motors are angled 20 degrees frontwards or forward tilt. So that, that ought to give us quite a bit more speed. All right, now let's worry about ESCs. Uh, during the break I took a look at ESCs while I was trying to figure out placement. And a modification that Rotor Geeks at least has made is they've, they've shortened their leads here to 12 centimeters. So if you put it on the arm, that lead is not going to be long enough. But it doesn't matter. I was going to mount it inside of the body for a nice clean aerodynamic look anyway. And then there'll be plenty of room there. So let's go ahead and put your power distribution board in place. Just use these uh, uh, metallic, non-metallic uh, stands to put it in place. I've already put a Palulu on there so I can have a 12 volt regulated. I'll show you why in just a few moments. Take your ESCs and go ahead and solder them onto your power distribution board. Mount your motors and then connect them. I don't have bullets on here and that's okay because I'm going to cut this off and in my case, I'm going to solder my motors directly to these ESCs. be a lot neater, I think, and I don't have to worry about bullets coming loose during flight and crashing this thing. I'll crash it by myself. I don't need any help. So go ahead and do that, and we'll move on to the next step. 
All right, when you get done, it all looks something like this. If your motor's coming in, there everything's tied down. Your ESCs are zip tied down. Everything's soldered to your power distribution board. And I've got these servos. I've actually got these numbered already and kind of get them folded out of the way because what we want to do next, if you have anything that needs power uh, that's going to be up on the topper decks, things like your, well, for example, your video transmitter, your camera, and I, I'm going to have a voltage monitor for... Um, for the OSD, you're going to need some power. And what I'm going to do is just use these little JSTs. I like these a lot because they're indexed and they can only be plugged in one way. Impossible to screw up. So I'm going to take three of these and I'm going to solder them on this AUX1 terminal and that'll give me the, uh, the flight pack voltage. And my video transmitter and camera, everything operates off flight pack voltage, so I shouldn't have any trouble there. The other thing I'm going to do is, uh, you notice I got a 12 volt uh, Pololu here. It's not anything critical, it's another piece of the V2 bling. And he's going to need power, but it's got to be 12 volts. And I'll show you what it is in a minute, but we're going to solder one of these little JSTs on this auxiliary terminal right here. And the last thing we're going to do, you're going to need to put your battery, whatever uh, terminal you use, and we're going to go ahead and install him right here. So let's do that, and then we'll talk about getting ready to button this thing up. All right, those three soldered on there pretty easy. So we got three power supplies there. We got our 12 volt power supply here, and we went ahead and put in a battery, which I all, right now I've got it connected up to a test battery. It's a little 3S uh, test battery because what we're going to do is check the rotation of the motors. Now, you can check the rotation of your motors when you wire it up by doing the wiring trick, reversing wires to get uh, clockwise, or you can do it with a servo tester, and that's what we have here. It's a $4 or $5 servo charger. This one's from ReadyMade RC, and all you do is when you have power supplied, match up your wires. So we got signal white. We just plug that dude right in there like that, and if you have a beck, on your ESC, it'll light up. If you don't have a Beck, you simply plug in a power supply right there. When you get it plugged in, you get a light, and turn on, turn it up a little bit, and you can see motor number four is turning in the correct direction. He's going clockwise, which is exactly what we want. Now, if we had screwed up and miswired it, we'd simply reverse two of the wires, or if you have a BL Heli like I do here, you can go into these little programming leads hidden away there, all of them have these little programming leads, and you can, with software, reverse the direction of your motor. So there's several different options. All right, let's get down to some bling. Now you'll notice I got some rails on this thing. I ran my power out the back. I ran it through this. These are basically spacers, and I've put little gills on there to allow air to flow in and out to keep my uh, ESCs cool. I ran the battery through one of the little gills, and then we tied them down with some zip tie. So in case we do have a crash, the battery will pull off without putting any stress on our power distribution board. Okay, let's get down to what is the next uh, improvement for the version 2. Here we have some NeoPixel LEDs. I can program these any color I want. I have them red right now, and the way I program them, you guys probably know a lot more about this than I do. This is an Adafruit trinket. I don't know if we can even get that to focus. This is basically a little Arduino computer. Uh, we can program this thing to do a wide variety of things, but right now I've got it feeding out to these three LEDs. And this does something that the Naze LED controller can't do. Let me show you. This is the look that I'm after. I've got to plug it in the right way. And we get our, that dude plugged in. Is that cool or what? We're going to put that on the front somewhere. I don't quite have it figured out. But I can also change this so it looks like a uh, police car light, so I can pull other quads over. Or I can just hover above people and act like I'm scanning them. Anyway, pretty cool. Doesn't really add anything to the performance, but it does add to the cool factor, and that's really what we're after. All right, let's go ahead. We're ready now. We're going to go ahead and um, take our top plate, put it on there, feed all of our wires up, and we're going to talk about putting in our flight controller and the OSD. So let's go ahead and do that. Put your top on, and we'll be right back. All right, starting to look pretty good. I got all the pins soldered on, and on the bottom, I just reversed them. So my four motors are going on here, and then the power lead there comes from the main battery. This goes to the power sensor, so I can read the voltage on the OSD. I'm going to tuck those wires down in that hole, and then tie this down with some nylon nuts. Next part, we're going to try to figure out the OSD. I almost have to get my magnifier out to figure this thing out. But anyway, the OSD is going to tie up right here onto these four pins. That's the UART. And then we're going to put the GPS 
onto these pins here. We only need four of these six wires and for some strange reason, I don't know if you can make that out, but for some strange reason they've made both the hot and the ground red and then the two wires that aren't needed, they both of those are black. I don't know why they did that, but we'll figure it out. And then the last one lead is here. That's where the PPM from my receiver is going to go. I'm going to have two power leads, one for the video transmitter, one for my camera. Hardly anything going to be sticking out of this. Very neat build. All right, I want you guys to see what this looks like before we button the top of it up. You can see I went ahead and zip-tied down my receiver right here, and he plugs into the PPM slot right on the nase right there. I've gone ahead and plugged in also the four wires, so make a note if you're going to do this, the four wires from the GPS, and as I suspected, uh, two of the wires weren't needed. And so I went ahead and put the correct ones in, so now black is ground, red is hot, and then we got the transmit and receive. Those are the only four that have to go into the into the uh, nays, and they go, of course, right here. The original power plug, which was this one, I had it plugged into the bottom of the board, and then as I started looking at things, I realized that the power plug actually has to go into the OSD. So I'm used to plugging them in the board, but uh, in actuality, it gets plugged in to the OSD right there. The four wires out of here, out of the OSD, get plugged directly into the nays there. It's a one for one. Very easy. Just match up the colors and plug them in. My camera goes right into also into the video in of the OSD and then the video out goes back to my video transmitter. The video transmitter gets power from the plug that we left hanging out there. So really everything worked out quite well. All I've got to do now is uh, go ahead and put the top on it. I'm going to take this GPS and mount him on the top tray just as far away as I can get him from this 2.4 transmitter. I've already tested it and uh, after I get done with this clip, I'll put a very short clip of what the OSD looks like before we come back and uh, look at the final product. All right, here's what we ended up with after just a little bit of trial and error. Had, on the second deck here, I went ahead and uh, put the second set of gills in there. Looks kind of neat, adds a little bit to it. And I also went ahead and stacked my receiver on top of my transmitter. I didn't like my two antennas on the very back side by side. So this spaces them out just a little bit and gives me some room inside of there. Uh, the GPS, I went ahead and tacked that up here with uh, these uh, non-metallic standoffs and it works perfectly like that. On the front, um, I went ahead and used, it's not a photography platform after all, so I took my Mobius and kind of slid it in. It's a perfect fit between those two decks, but I zip tied it anyway and it really is a perfect fit. It's almost like it was made for it because the power button, easily accessible right there on the front. And then on the front of the camera, I went ahead and hot glued our bling to kind of freak out any passers-by and so that uh, quads that we're chasing can look in their rearview mirror and see some flashing lights. So anyway, fellas, there you go. Let's see if we can take this out and uh, make it fly. By the way, I put the battery on the bottom and I put the legs on the front to kind of hold it more or less level.